Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mock. Welcome to Philadelphia Eagles Now. It is a Monday. You know what that means. Let's jump in the latest Eagles news and rumors here on the last day of February. Yes, in March, starting tomorrow, you're going to be in the month of free agency, in the month of trades. And so starting tomorrow, start getting hyped up for free agency and trades. Speaking of trades, let's go and jump into a trade that has been asked about in my in my, in my Twitter DMs at Real Thomas Mott seemingly every single day. Thomas Mott, DK Metcalf. What about DK Metcalf for a first or a second? Should we go for DK Metcalf? Package DK Metcalf with Russell Wilson. Thomas, tell me what to do. Breathe. I'm going to go into my thoughts on DK Metcalf. So there are reports that have come out over the past couple of weeks, including this most recent, I think it was this weekend, saying that DK Metcalf and the Seahawks could be looking to go ahead uh, and mutually part ways via a trade, and the asking price could possibly be a first-round draft pick. Now, naturally, we talk about DK Metcalf because Philadelphia needs wide receivers, and the Eagles should have drafted DK Metcalf a couple of years ago. Wouldn't have had this problem, but instead... J.J. Ortega Whiteside, you guys know the rest, right? I don't want to complain about that today because we know that. However, when I see the asking price of a first-round draft pick, it's it's a lot, right? I mean, now you talk about three first-round draft picks, so getting rid of one first-star receiver is not necessarily you know, giving up the entire sun, moon, and stars to get D.K. Metcalf. However, let's say you were to get Metcalf. You give up number 19 overall. That's... That's a lot. I'm going to explain why I think it might be a little bit too much for me. And I'm not an anti-DK Metcalf guy. You guys just know that I like protect these three uh, first-round draft picks like they were my own. Like, 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 like my children. I love them so much. I would only give them away for, you know, real compensation. Not that I give my children away and I don't have any children. Either way, you get my point. I love these things. I want to keep them. And that's why I'm a little bit uh, weary about trading for DK Metcalf. I'll ask you guys this, though. Would you rather have DK Metcalf or a first-round wide receiver? Hmm? Like, that's what I'm going to get into, right? Metcalf or one of the first-round rookie draft wide receivers you can get in April. If you want Metcalf, type Ember Metcalf. If you want a first-rounder, type 1 down below in the comment section. Now, let's just be clear. DK Metcalf is an elite wide receiver. I'm not saying that he's not a good receiver. I think he's fantastic. Look at these numbers during a down year, technically, for both Metcalf and Seattle's offense because Russell Wilson missed multiple games with that thumb injury. Still had 75 catches, still had 967 yards, and the big number, 12 touchdowns. This guy's an incredible deep threat. He's insane in the red zone. He makes a lot of big, you know, contested catches that you expect his big body to go ahead and do so. He would be fantastic opposite of Devontae Smith. I'm not saying that, you know, he would be bad on Philadelphia. He wouldn't be a good fit in Philadelphia, you think that he would be a good option. I'm a DK Metcalf fan. My problem is, as you look at, you know, Philadelphia's depth chart, you look at Metcalf as a whole, I just don't know if I want to give up a first round draft pick. Like, how do I, how do I explain this? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think how, how I get my point across. I like Metcalf. However, I think the possibility of getting a superstar wide receiver in this draft in the first round is very, very high, who might be better than Metcalf, at least, you know, at the end of his career, and at least cheaper than Metcalf because you're paying him a rookie contract versus having to extend Metcalf here in the next couple of years. Like, these top four receivers in the draft are are all really good, and I, I, I really like all of them, right? It's about Trey, Traylon Burks, another big physical frame on the outside of Arkansas. You know, he's my favorite in this draft. Drake London, also a big physical frame on the outside, six foot five, very much in the Metcalf frame size. However, about the ankle injury. You got Chris Olave, more of a speedster, more of a route running guy. Same with Garrett Wilson. Like, these are all very good players. My thoughts on Metcalf, though, is very simple. I'd rather get the younger guy on the cheaper contract and have the opportunity to be even better than Metcalf is than you have a first round draft pick for DK Metcalf. Now, second round draft pick, I'm all for that. I do that today. I do a second and a third if you're going to get DK Metcalf. But a first to me is just a little bit. Ooh, I'm just a little bit hesitant on that, and I want to share my thoughts starting on the day with Metcalf and the other wide receivers. Now, name your top wide receiver target this offseason, whether it's draft or free agency or trade. Is it Metcalf? Is it free agency like Mike Williams or Allen Robinson? Devontae Adams, unlikely. Or is it a tra or is it a, a rookie guy like Traylon Burks or somebody else? You guys know that my perfect fit is in free agency, and that, of course, is Mike Williams. You don't have to trade for him. But however, I want to hear from you guys. Let me know down below in the comment section right now. Now, before we go and get into our next bit of news here, we're going to do an early mailbag shout-out as the mailbag are co is coming later on this week. And so, I figured on Monday, let's get the mailbag questions in nice and early. Go down below and be a subscriber. That's your best chance to be featured. And also, use the hashtag Eagles in the comment section to ask any sort of mailbag-related question. They're some of the most fun videos we do here on the channel because it's 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 random. It's like whatever you guys want to ask. And I take the best seven random questions, and I give you my honest thoughts on that. That's the goal here on the channel. If you like it, go down below um, and subscribe. All right, next question here, or I should say next story, comes via Brian Dawkins. B-Doc, yes, one of the most, uh, I would say, loved Eagles of all time. I think you can put him right up, right up there with, with Reggie White. I know that if you're buying a jersey these days, you know, he's one of the you know, past Eagles who don't even play anymore. You'd still rep at Lincoln Financial Field and look great. Well, finally, someone put a microphone in front of Brian Dawkins and asked him about the quarterback situation. So he gave some thoughts on Jalen Hurts and really put his weight behind Jalen Hurts. And this becomes, again, a reoccurring theme that both past and present Eagle players seem to be very much behind Jalen Hurts. You can talk 
talk about his on the field play, but as we'll see, I, I really think that the locker room and his, his ability to lead as a, as a man, as, as, as a human, is incredibly special. So here with Brian Dawkins on Jalen Hurst, throw it up on the screen right now, quote, he has a level of fight in him that they should love. The dude is extremely talented on the field. He's not all of a sudden at the best he's ever going to be in, really, his rookie year. Uh, end quote. Listen, again, I, I've defended Jalen Hurts 8 billion times. You can just, you know, mark this on your bingo card when you watch today's video, defending Jalen Hurts, check. Eagle players seem to love Jalen Hurts, and that's very, very important, right? Because you can talk about trading for Russell Wilson or trading for Deshaun Watson or drafting somebody else, but inside the locker room does matter. And what your right tackle, what your wide receiver, what your defensive lineman, what your linebacker coach, all matters in terms of if they like Jalen Hurts or not. And one thing I think we can all agree on when it comes to Jalen Hurts is that Players do like him. Like, he's not a Kyler Murray type situation where there are reports that, you know, Murray's not great in the locker room. Hurts is fantastic in the locker room. He is a leader. He leads by example. And yes, is the play on the field not at a Russell Wilson level or at an elite quarterback level yet? Sure. I mean, no one's saying that it's not. However, the opportunity to continue to grow as a leader, both on and off the football field and as a player on the football field, is still there. And I love seeing Brian Dawkins throw his support out uh, for Jalen Hurts. You guys support Hurts, too, right? I think the majority of you guys do. I know that a lot of people go back and say, Thomas, watch the Tampa Bay film. Like, uh, Todd Bowles just, just, oh, he ate Jalen Hurts' lunch. He missed so many throws. Okay, I know. But watch some of the other good film that Jalen Hurts has. It's not just one game at a time. It's an entire season's worth of film. I think it's better uh, than it is actually worse. I would type Y down below for yes if I support Hurts. If you do not, type N down below for now. Okay, one thing I do support is the polos that are still on sale right now, 25% off. Again, I keep reminding you because one day they're either be out of your size, they're not going to be on sale anymore. Link is in the description box right now. Also on your screen, chessports.com forward slash eagle polos. So the two pack right now for 25% off. You can rep it on the links. It's here I'm in Atlanta. We're going to have our, our, our warmest weekend coming up here. And so if I'm going to get on the golf course, I want to rep the Eagles. And if you guys want to get on the golf course too and rep the Eagles as well, do it with our friends uh, at chessports.com forward slash eagles polo. That link is down below me right now. All right, quickly, some rapid-fire news to end here on a Monday. Nothing crazy, but I wanted to mention at least three things here quickly. Gardner Minshew keeps being linked to a possible Panther trade, which is interesting because Carolina, of course, hasn't figured out their quarterback spot yet, although there was links that he was, you know, Kirk Cousins was linked to the Carolina Panthers last week. So I think Carolina is very much in the market for trading for a quarterback, and so Minshew becomes one of those options if you wanted to pit him against Sam Darnold in kind of a quarterback battle uh, in Carolina. Uh, Daniel Jeremiah put out a mock draft, and he was talking about, or at least was asked about, in terms of first-round first, first round wide receivers and where, what Philadelphia should do. And he said Garrett Wilson is the best wide receiver in the draft, which I've heard from multiple people. And that's, I don't know. I mean, again, there are four wide receivers we talked about earlier who all could be the best wide receiver in the draft. We won't know until you actually get them on the football field with their respective teams. However, Daniel Jeremiah thinks that Garrett Wilson is a very real opportunity for Philadelphia and thinks the Eagles should take him uh, with one of their first-round draft picks. I'm not... You know, a, an anti-Wilson guy. I think he's a little too much like Devontae Smith. I want the bigger physical target, hence why I like Traylon Burks or Mike Williams, but that's just me. Jeremiah is a big Garrett Wilson, uh, Garrett Wilson fan. And finally, Cal Hamilton. I saw multiple articles asking the question, should Philadelphia trade up for a player? And if who, they all settled on, settled, settled on Cal Hamilton. We talked about him a little bit in the past during our mailbag videos. I'm not anti-Cal Hamilton. I just don't think safety is that big of a need in the National Football League. I think you can win Super Bowls, as we've seen with, you know, average safeties. And most safeties are average. Some of the better safeties in the National Football League aren't on winning football teams. And so I think Hamilton would be a big impact in Philadelphia. They haven't had an elite safety in a very, very long time, at least since Malcolm Jenkins. But trading up for him to me, eh, I'd rather trade up for like a guy like Ahmad Gardner versus Cal Hamilton. Cause I think corner is more important than safety, but that is just me. Um, I'll end on this, though. How important do you guys see safety uh, this offseason? Is it, like, super important? Like, a, like a 10 on a scale of 1 to 10? Is it a 1? Like, not important at all? I think I'm at, like, a 5 or a 6. Like, we look around in for agency. There's some good options out there. But trading up in the draft? Mm, I'm a little bit out on that. Give me your thoughts down below right now. Okay, as I mentioned, people DM me on Twitter all the time as we end today's video. So if you want to be a part of that group, follow me on Twitter right now, at RealThomasMott. Slide into my DMs, and if it's a good question, you guys want to chat, I'll probably respond. So at RealThomasMott, give me a follow uh, and give, shoot me a DM as well. Also, as I mentioned, mailbag call happening right now for later on this week. Go down below, subscribe, hashtag Eagles to ask any sort of Eagle-related question that you want. All time for today on our Eagles uh, News and Rumor video, Thomas Mott signing off. Do the rest of your day.